need to ensure environmental integrity, resilience and sustainability with the aim of keeping uh, average global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. Paul's already articulated actually how tough that may be insofar as we've already gone past 400 ppm and as soon as we've got 1,000 gigatons in the atmosphere cumulative, uh, then we're in trouble. Uh, one of the places where we can get rid of it, as Paul's articulating, is in peatlands. Uh, one of the reasons uh, peatlands have been uh, an issue is because actually some of our anthropogenic activities, basically activities by us, have been producing a, a carbon source uh, through degradations to peatlands uh, over time. Uh, some of these figures Paul already articulated, what we're interested in, of course, is also a methane story. So these wetlands are big sources of methane. Uh, they contribute 10% globally to methane flux to the atmosphere. And actually methane is quite a uh, potent and important greenhouse gas as well. The key message here then to articulate as well Paul's point, uh, bad peats uh, don't provide carbon services. So we geoengineer uh, for various reasons, also for biodiversity, uh, for habitats reasons, uh, driven by European directives as well, um, but also because Peatlands and our moors provide recreational value, so they have additional human uh, value there as well. But we recognise, and it has been recognised internationally, uh, that peatlands are now used to engineer climate, much as Paul was saying, uh, that we can have peatlands and use them as uh, nature's way of sequestering carbon. And it's based on these ideas. Uh, a near natural bog is a net drawdown of carbon uh, when you put together both uh, carbon dioxide sequestration by, as Paul said, the photosynthetic pump, as well as the balance against uh, methane emissions. When it's in a bad condition, it releases both. Uh, in the early days of restoration, it actually releases more methane. It's a net uh, contributor to uh, additional climate change. Uh, but the idea and the understanding is that over time, here between 10 and 20 years, it eventually balances out and becomes, again, a net uh, drawdown. Paul mentioned how relevant this is to the UK already. Uh, I'll just highlight the bottom one there. The loss of 5% of UK peatland carbon uh, equals the total annual UK anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions. So it's an important store. Its fluxes are incredibly important. We need to understand that. What we're not totally sure of is how things are going to change in the future. How will future climate change then impact upon our ability to maintain healthy wetland systems? One of the key challenges then in terms of defining externalities and also then setting a tradable carbon price uh, is where is the carbon coming from? And I mentioned methane, and methane's a really key story with respect to global wetlands insofar as we, we recognise there is photosynthetic growth and we believe largely that that's, uh, that uses carbon dioxide drawn out of the atmosphere. Actually, uh, there is reason to believe that certainly if we get wetlands too wet, then certain bacteria that eat methane and respire CO2 then provide the carbon dioxide for plants. So rather than uh, a good healthy wetland system actually drawing it down out of the atmosphere, we can see some recycling going on with old carbon bubbling up from underneath as methane and then getting reincorporated. And so that's, that poses a key challenge to how we then take this to market or how uh, landowners or land managers can try and finance restoration or conservation using carbon markets if we're not entirely sure where the carbon's coming from. So that is a key challenge for the future. Should bogs look like this? Uh, well, the question is, um, how wet? So do wet, to wet or not to wet? Or rather, how much to wet? Uh, we need to understand the source of the archived carbon and then use that to leverage the right finance um, via the carbon markets to facilitate um, further conservation. So how we accept the challenge? Well, if that is the challenge, uh, we must understand carbon sequestration uh, dynamics of peatlands globally uh, and how to recover costs against investing in that carbon service. 